All right, so let's talk about interrupt masking. It's sometimes useful to basically disable the interrupts. Most often you want to do this when you're already in the middle of an interrupt. There's this notion of you know, re-entrancy and whether or not you can interrupt while inside of an interrupt or inside of an interrupt. And generally speaking, most systems are not designed to support this uh, unlimited nesting of interrupts. So if you go into an interrupt and you want to block subsequent interrupts until you're done with the most critical section of that interrupt handling, that can be done by clearing the interrupt flag. Now it turns out that the interrupt flag is actually, so first of all, it's a flag in the R flags register, and it's automatically cleared whenever an interrupt occurs through an interrupt gate. But it is not cleared if you go through a trap gate. And as we said in the previous section, this is literally the only difference, descriptor style, like they're all the exact same fields and stuff like that. It basically comes down to if you set something up to vector through an interrupt gate, that means you want the interrupt flag cleared. And if you set it up to go through a trap gate, that means you don't want it automatically cleared. Now, even if it wasn't automatically cleared, you could still, in your interrupt handler, manually clear it by using the clear interrupt flag instruction, but that would be somewhat pointless, right? Why use a trap gate just to go on to manually clear it when you could just use an interrupt gate? But the options do exist, particularly for, you know, situations in which, you know, perhaps some kernel code wants to make really, really sure that it doesn't get interrupted by some hardware interrupts. Uh, they can go ahead and clear the interrupt flag. And, unclear it once they're ready to accept interrupts again. So there's the interrupt flag, bit 9 in the R flags register, and it's the interrupt enable flag. So there's a couple exceptions to the interrupt masking, and that is that the interrupt flag does not mask, so if this is clear, it does not mask the explicit invocation of an interrupt with those software instructions we saw previously, the int n, int 1, 3, o, duty 2. Also, the interrupt flag does not mask a non-maskable interrupt. That's the whole point. The non-maskable interrupt is a high priority thing that no one can stop and it's just coming through.